today's video is on alternative respiratory substrates. So glucose isn't the only substrate that can be oxidized by cells to release energy in aerobic respiration, because we know when we looked at aerobic respiration, our initial reactant was glucose, and we oxidized that overall to release energy in aerobic respiration. But glucose isn't the only substrate that can do that. We can, in fact, use other sugars, we can use lipids, and we can use proteins. And other sugars is quite simple because other sugars can just be converted into glucose or converted into a um, form that glucose takes over the process of aerobic respiration, whereas lipids and proteins are a bit more complicated. So first, looking at lipids. So, um, for example, a triglyceride is made of a glycerol molecule bonded to three fatty acids by ester bonds. And these lipids can be hydrolyzed, so these bonds can be broken, to form one glycerol and three fatty acids. And water is also produced along by this because hydrolysis is the breaking of bonds um, with the removal of water. So we form a glycerol, three fatty acids and some water molecules. So our glycerol that we have formed can be phosphorylated. So this means that it gains um, phosphate groups. And so if our glycerol can, is phosphorylated, it is converted into triose phosphate. And triose phosphate, if you remember, is an intermediate in glycolysis. So this means that if we can form our triose phosphate from our glycerol, and put it into the middle of glycolysis, it replaces the need for glucose because glucose is converted into triose phosphate. So if we can immediately put in our triose phosphate from our glycerol that we've phosphorylated, we don't need glucose anymore. And our fatty acids can be broken down into two carbon fragments. So you can see that our fatty acid chains have many carbons. But if we break these down into two carbon fragments, these can be converted into acetyl coenzyme A. And this replaces the need for glycolysis and the link reaction because acetyl coenzyme A is the final product of the link reaction, which is the reactant of the Krebs cycle. So if we have initially formed acetyl coenzyme A from our fatty acids, we can put that straight into the Krebs cycle, replacing the need for glycolysis and the link reaction. And or we could do the oxidation of lipids. So the oxidation of lipids means that the lipid is losing hydrogens. So the oxidation of lipids produces many hydrogens because the hydrogens are lost from the lipid. So these hydrogens can be used in oxidative phosphorylation to produce ATP. And glycolysis, the link reaction, and the Krebs cycle are only performed to produce hydrogens for oxidative phosphorylation. So if we can oxidize our lipids and produce these hydrogens, that means we, re we are replacing the need for glycolysis, the link reaction, and the Krebs cycle because we straight out have the hydrogens we need. So this is how uh, lipids can replace glucose as the substrate for aerobic respiration in three different ways, by phosphorylating glycerol, by breaking down fatty acids into two carbon fragments, or by oxidizing the lipid overall to produce hydrogens. And then there is proteins. So how are proteins used as an alternative respiratory substrate? So our proteins can be hydrolyzed into amino acids because our proteins, remember, are uh, polymers made of amino acid monomers. So if we hydrolyze our protein, we are forming amino acids plus water because this hydrolysis reaction is the breaking of bonds with the removal of water. So this is the format of an amino acid. We have our amine group, we have our carboxylic uh, acid group, and we have our R group, which is unique to each amino acid.
So our amino acids can be deaminated. So this means that they lose their amine group. So we only have this section here, our R group, our central carbon, our hydrogen and our carboxylic acid group. So these deaminated amino acids can be entered into different stages of the respiratory cycle depending on how many carbons they have. So the carbons will differ due to the R group. So it's depending on how many overall carbons we have, including in the R group, into where these deaminated amino acids can be entered in. So, for example, a three carbon amino acid can be converted into pyruvate molecules and our pyruvate molecule can be then entered into the link reaction because pyruvate is the product of glycolysis, so the reactant in the link reaction. So this removes the need for glycolysis because if we can produce our pyruvate from our deaminated amino acid straight off, we don't need glycolysis, we don't need glucose, we can just enter our pyruvate molecule into the link reaction. And if the deaminated amino acid has five or four carbons, these can be converted into various intermediates in the Krebs cycle. For example, oxaloacetate. And oxaloacetate is a six carbon, I mean, a four carbon molecule um, at the beginning of the Krebs cycle, which we um, add to acetyl coenzyme A. So if we have a five or four carbon deaminated amino acid, these can be converted into various intermediates in the Krebs cycle, removing the need for glycolysis and the link reaction, meaning we don't need glucose anymore. So this is how proteins can be used as an alternative respiratory substrate because they are deaminated and depending on how many carbons they have, they can be converted into different um, molecules to be entered into different stages in the respiratory cycle.